The test is in four part, part 1, part 2, part 3, and part 4. Now look at part 1. Part 1. You will hear a conversation between two students about the installation of a telephone. You have half a minute to read the questions first. Now listen to the conversation carefully and answer questions 1 to 10. I buy a new telephone. You read the instructions and I will install it, right? Sure. First, push the battery door outward to open and then insert two batteries, size AAA. Make sure they are following the polarity directions indicated inside the battery compartment. Finally, close the battery door. This is the first step. Now, let's come to the second step, adjusting time. Press time key first, then press MRC key more than one second to enter the time, adjusting state. Have you seen the second digit flashing now? Yes, it is flashing now. So, let's go on. Press MRC key again to adjust minute hour date. Have you finished? Yes, all the digits have been flashing successively. Now it comes to adjusting alarm. Press alarm key to enter the three states of A1, A2, A3. Pay attention to the two keys in the corner on the right hand. They are the keys to lock and unlock the alarm respectively. Press MRC key to enter the adjusting procedure. And have you seen the second digit begin to flash? Yes, I think I should repeat this action, yes? Yes. Press MRC key again to adjust minute and the on-off of the alarm. By now you own a phone at the same time with a clock that can wake you up in the early morning. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. You will hear a lecturer discussing the possibility of creating nuclear fusion. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. We look at the sun, a huge ball streaming out essentially limitless energy into space, and we think about how we need that energy here on Earth. Our oil reserves are running out, coal burning causes much pollution, and nuclear energy has many dangers. But where does the sun itself get its energy? The answer is that the sun makes it using fusion, or, more specifically, in a hydrogen fusion process. There is no pollution, no radioactivity, no waste products, and we have plenty of hydrogen. So, hydrogen fusion seems the perfect answer to our energy needs, and scientists have long attempted to achieve it here on Earth. So what happens during this process? The first step, is to make two light atomic particles approach. In the case of our sun, these are hydrogen particles, the lightest and also the easiest to deal with. However, 
The problem is that the nuclei of atoms have electric fields and fusion between these particles is opposed by their similar electric charge. They most naturally repel each other and the nuclei of all elements are exactly the same in this respect. Thus, in order to overcome this repulsion and force them together, in the second step, the particles are heated. The trouble is, you need a lot of heat, incredible temperatures of the sort only seen on the surface of the sun. This is many millions of degrees, far higher than the melting point of any known material. Still, the concept is simple. The hot, wildly moving particles, which are now called plasma, will crash into each other, resulting in the third step, the fusion into helium, which releases energy and begins a self-sustained process. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. So, we know how fusion works. Thus, the big question is, can we create it here on Earth? We actually have the technology to superheat hydrogen into plasma, but no container on Earth can deal with those temperatures. Thus, we need to confine this superheated material so that it doesn't touch anything. For that, we need a special reactor, and most research has focused on an apparatus known as a tokamak system. That's T-O-K-A-M-A-K, -A -A an acronym from some Russian words meaning toroidal chamber with magnetic field. It's an apt name since a very powerful magnetic field is used to confine and suspend the super hot plasma in the air so that it doesn't touch anything. This is possible only because this plasma has an electric charge which interacts with the magnetic field. Of course, the walls of the fusion vessel will still get hot, very hot, and to avoid being melted they must be cooled with a cryogenic system to intensely low temperatures. But now we are faced with the second problem. If we are to draw power from this system, the reaction must be continuous and controllable. However, when fusion begins, the plasma becomes unstable, and at these temperatures, that is a very serious situation. If we lose control, a disaster could result. Despite the obstacles, in 2010, a European device managed some success, but needed far more power to generate the fusion reaction than that produced from the fusion itself. Obviously then, it was not useful as a power source. More to the point, this system could only sustain a fusion reaction for a fraction of a second. Yet, to self-sustain, the fusion needs to run for at least 10 seconds. And the future looks... bleak. Unfortunately, most scientists predict that many decades will have to pass before fusion power can become a practical reality. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. Today in our studio is Sue Gent, a staff member of Clean Up Australia. Thank you, Tony. As we know, the mission of Clean Up Australia is to inspire and work with communities to clean up, fix up and conserve our environment. Now, we are launching Say No to Plastic Bags campaign. The focus is to enable shoppers and retailers to reduce the number of plastic bags handed out at checkouts. How much do you know about plastic bags? Plastic is a recyclable resource. They are manufactured from non-renewable resources like oil and gas. The embodied petroleum energy contained in 8.7 checkout bags is enough to drive a car one kilometer. If plastic is not recycled, this embodied energy is lost from the resource chain. An estimated 36,700 tonnes of plastic bags are disposed of in landfill sites throughout Australia each year. Australians dump 4,000 recyclable plastic bags into landfills every minute. How does plastic litter harm the environment? Many thousands of seabirds and marine mammals die every year around the world as a result of plastic litter. When the animal dies and decays, the plastic is free again to repeat the deadly cycle. There are two reasons that plastic bags are particularly problematic in the litter stream. Firstly, they last from 20 to a thousand years. Secondly, they escape and float easily in air and water, travelling long distances. Now, any questions from you? Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 26 to 30. How can I help reduce the number of plastic bags used? In addition to saying no to plastic bags at supermarkets, you can help reduce plastic bags at convenience stores and takeaway food shops. These retailers account for 47% of single-use plastic shopping bags. You can help in the following ways. For example, you can keep a reusable bag in your car or handbag to use for unexpected purchases. Besides, if you have placed a big order at a takeaway store, ask for the food to be packed in a cardboard box that can later be recycled. Could you tell me where I can recycle my plastic bags? Well, most larger supermarkets and local stockland shopping centres have recycling facilities available. Remember to turn bags inside out and remove any receipts and food scraps before recycling. Contamination can cause problems in production and prevent recycled plastic from being used. What happens to recycled plastic bags? Plastic bags are recycled to make garden furniture, garden sleepers, flower pots and new plastic bags. Should I use biodegradable plastic bags? A biodegradable product is one that breaks down safely, by biological means, into the raw materials of nature and disappears into the environment. There is currently no Australian standard for biodegradable plastic bags. This means there is no guarantee that bags will completely break down, as claimed by their manufacturer. Until an Australian standard has been developed and these bags have been tested, Clean Up Australia cannot recommend using plastic bags that claim to be biodegradable. Overall, do our best to refuse, reduce and reuse plastic bags whenever possible. If you throw plastic bags away, tie them in a knot. This limits the chance that they'll blow out of a bin or blow away in landfills. By following a few simple steps, we can stop plastic bags from blocking our drains and creeks, injuring our precious marine life and harming our wildlife. That is the end of part three. 
You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You will hear a local radio program giving information about jobs that are available in the area. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. This is Mandy. Good morning, Mandy. What's up in the employment world this morning? Well, Simon, this morning I have five jobs that have come in, and the first is for a dental assistant. That's located in Tunbridge, and it's two and a half days a week, Tuesdays, Thursdays and Saturday mornings. You've got to be at least 25 and the salary is £2,080 per annum and you've got to be experienced. The second opening is for a florist and this is according to experience as to wage and the age is open. The job is in Tunbridge Wells and the hours are from 9 to 6 Monday to Saturday and because you're working Saturday you get a day off in the week. Now, as that's a florist, you must be very experienced in all aspects of floristry and capable of working to a very high standard. Previous managerial experience is an advantage as this job has actually got nice prospects um, because there's a possibility of management for the right applicant. So there's one for someone who's going places. What's next, Mandy? Next job then, Simon, is an evening job and it's for a cleaner. The wage is £25 per week and the age is 30 plus. Hours for this, as it's an evening job, 6 to 8.30 Monday to Friday. So that's a nice job for someone who wants to do something in the evening, Simon. Mm hmm. They must be fully experienced as an office cleaner, hoovering, dusting and polishing, etc. And where's that one based? Oh yes, that one's in Tunbridge. The fourth job we've got lined up is for General Catering Assistant, based in Paddock Wood. The wage is £48.40 plus full board, so that's full board and it's £48.40. The age is 18 plus and there are alternate shifts on this job. It's 7am to 3pm and 11.30 to 7.30pm and the job consists of cleaning, washing up the kitchen as well as serving in the dining room and all sorts of domestic duties. Experience is not necessary. So for someone who's 18 plus, that's a nice little job there. And here's the punchline, 10 weeks holiday per annum. Oh, ho! Oh, I might put in for that myself. I can just see you up to your elbows in the washing up, Simon. Uh, last vacancy is for an office job. That's secretary and personal assistant based in Tunbridge. The wage is £4,298 per annum. Now, there's a little bit of detail I must give here. It's part-time to start with. Three days a week for three months. So for the part-time, it's three-fifths of £4,298. And then after three months, it goes to a full-time job, nine to five. That's for someone 21 plus. And the job consists of work as a secretary come personal assistant to social workers. You need fairly good shorthand and good typing speeds required. And it's also related to clerical work, answering the phone and reception, etc. And um, because it's working for social workers, you need a responsible attitude and common sense. 
So if you're interested in any of these jobs, get in touch with Tunbridge Job Centre on Tunbridge 55499 and ask for extension 30. And that's it, Simon. Thank you very much indeed, Mandy. By the way, that's your day's work done. You can just sit back now and do absolutely nothing. Wouldn't that be nice, Simon? Ha ha, if only I could. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.